Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. The Apostle Paul assures us in his letter to the Christians in Rome that God will work all things for the good of his people. God can even take the sinful actions of his people and work them for good. We're going to see God do just that in our Old Testament reading for today. God takes the sinful actions of Judah, the son of Israel, and works them out for the good of all people. Judah is the son of Israel, the son of Jacob, who is going to be the ancestor of the Savior. The Lord shows his faithfulness to his promise to send that Savior as he provides, Jacob, or provides Judah with an heir, a son, who is going to be the ancestor of the Savior. He's going to have twins, actually, and their names are going to be Perez and Zira. It is Perez that will be the next in the line of the Savior. At that time, Judah left his brothers and settled near an Adolamite named Hira. There, Judah saw the daughter of a Canaanite named Shua. He took her as a wife and slept with her. She conceived and gave birth to a son, and he named him Ur. She conceived again, gave birth to a son, and named him Onan. She gave birth to another son and named him Shelah. It was at Kazib that she gave birth to him. Judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. Now Ur, Judah's firstborn, was evil in the Lord's sight, and the Lord put him to death. Then Judah said to Onan, sleep with your brother's wife, perform your duty as her brother-in-law, and produce offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the offspring would not be his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he released his semen on the ground, so that he would not produce offspring for his brother. What he did was evil in the Lord's sight, so he put him to death also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah grows up. For he thought, he might die too, like his brothers. So Tamar went to live in her father's house. After a long time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. When Judah had finished mourning, he and his friend Hira the Adolamite went up to Timnah to his sheep shearers. Tamar was told, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she took off her widow's clothes, veiled her face, covered herself, and sat at the entrance to Anayim, which is on the way to Timnah. For she saw that, though Sheila had grown up, she had not been given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute, for she had covered her face. He went over to her and said, Come, let me sleep with you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, What will you give me for sleeping with me? I will send you a young goat from my flock, he replied. But she said, Only if you leave something with me until you send it. What should I give you? he asked. She answered, your signet ring, your cord, and the staff in your hand. So he gave them to her and slept with her, and she became pregnant by him. She got up and left, then removed her veil and put her widow's clothes back on. When Judah sent the young goat by his friend the Adolamite in order to get back the items he had left with the woman, he could not find her. He asked the men of the place, where is the cult prostitute who was beside the road at Anayim? There has been no cult prostitute here, they answered. So the Adolamite returned to Judah and said, I couldn't find her. And besides, the men of the place said, there has been no cult prostitute here. Judah replied, let her keep the items for herself. Otherwise, we will become a laughingstock. After all, I did send this young goat, but you couldn't find her. About three months later, Judah was told, your daughter-in-law Tamar has been acting like a prostitute, and now she is pregnant. Bring her out, Judah said, and let her be burned to death. As she was being brought out, she sent her father-in-law this message. I am pregnant by the man to whom these items belong. And she added, examine them. Whose signet ring, cord, and staff are these? Judah recognized them and said, 
She is more in the right than I, since I did not give her to my son, Sheila, and he did not know her intimately again. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twins in her womb. As she was giving birth, one of them put out his hand and the midwife took it and tied a scarlet thread around it, announcing, this one came out first. But then he pulled his hand back, out came his brother, and she said, what a breakout you have made for yourself. So he was named Perez. Then his brother, who had the scarlet thread tied to his hand, came out and was named Zara. We now turn to the Gospel of Mark again and look at Mark chapter 8. We're going to see Jesus feed 4,000 uh, men plus women and children. Uh, this time, uh, again, uh, again, it's going to be very similar to the miracle he performed earlier, where he fed 5,000 men plus women and children. Jesus will warn his disciples against the teaching of the Pharisees. We'll see him heal a blind man. And then we'll see Peter confess that Jesus is the Messiah, and then almost immediately show that he did not really understand what the Messiah came to do. Finally, we'll hear Jesus' encouragement that if we want to follow him, we need to take up our cross and then follow him. In those days, there was again a large crowd, and they had nothing to eat. He called the disciples and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd because they've already stayed with me three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them home hungry, they will collapse on the way, and some of them have come a long distance. His disciples answered him, where can anyone get enough bread here in this desolate place to feed these people? How many loaves do you have, he asked them. Seven, they said. He commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground. Taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks broke them, and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. So they served them to the crowd. They also had a few small fish, and after he had blessed them, he said these were to be served as well. They ate and were satisfied. Then they collected seven large baskets of leftover pieces. About 4,000 were there. He dismissed them, and he immediately got into the boat with his disciples, and went to the district of Dalmanutha. The Pharisees came and began to argue with him, demanding of him a sign from heaven to test him. Sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, why does this generation demand a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. Then he left them, got back into the boat, and went to the other side. The disciples had forgotten to take bread and had only one loaf with them in the boat. Then he gave them strict orders, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They were discussing among themselves that they did not have any bread. Aware of this, he said to them, why are you discussing the fact that you have no bread? Don't you understand or com comprehend? Do you have hardened hearts? Do you have eyes and not see? Do you have ears and not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of leftovers did you collect? 12, they told him. When I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets full of pieces did you collect? Seven, they said. And he said to them, don't you understand yet? They came to Bethsaida. They brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and brought him out of the village. Spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him, he asked him, do you see anything? He looked up and, and said, I see people. They look like trees walking. Again, Jesus placed his hands on the man's eyes. The man looked intently and his sight was restored and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Jesus went out with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the road, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? They answered him, John the Baptist, others, Elijah, still others, one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah and he strictly warned them to tell no one about him. 
Then he began to teach them that it was necessary for the Son of Man to suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed, and rise after three days. He spoke openly about this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning around and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. Calling the crowd along with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. For what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? What can anyone give in exchange for his life? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.